this is not a video about what you should eat in a day. This is a video about what I eat in a day. Now, can you watch this video and take a few ideas and add it to your own style of eating? Absolutely. And I promise if you do so, it will improve your ability to play better on the field. You'll have more energy. You can build more muscle. You can get leaner. You can feel better about yourself. Your mood can be better. You can think better. Your mind can be clearer. You can look better. You can live longer. Nutrition is everything. Food is mood. The food that you put in your body has a direct impact on how you feel and how you perform. So, there's a whole bunch of information. I am not expecting you to do all of this. In fact, it would be absolutely insane for you to try to do all this. Now, I'm a little bit crazy, especially when it comes to nutrition, so this is what I do. Let's cruise through it. Whole bunch of information, try to take a few ideas. First of all, 16 to 24 hour fasting window. That means for 16 to even 24 hours in a row, I am not consuming food. I'm not consuming calories. I'm drinking water, I'm drinking tea, maybe black coffee. What this is doing is giving my body an actual chance to heal itself. If you've been alive for let's say 25 years, you have to think about it. The last 25 of your years, the last 25 years of your life, every two to three hours, you've been putting food in your body. Your body's been digesting that, turning that into muscle, yes, doing all these good things, but has it actually had a chance to heal itself? Your body can heal itself, but you have to give it a chance to rest. And for most of us, the only time we're resting and recovering is when we're sleeping. Now, my goal with nutrition is yes, sports performance, of course, but it's longevity and it's health. So you have to understand that eating for sports performance, eating to perform better on game day is different than eating to live a very long time and be extremely healthy. If I was, if I had a game, I might consume food earlier in the day. I might break that fast, consume food earlier in the day, give my body a chance to actually absorb those nutrients so I can use it on the game. But if I'm just living a normal day, I'm trying to fast as long as possible, give my body enough time to recover, to flush out all the toxins, all the bad food, all the junk, and repair itself. So 16 hours uh, to 24 hours a day, I'm trying to fast. So that would be like, let's wake up. I'm not consuming breakfast. I'm not even consuming lunch. My first meal might be around three or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. But throughout the day, I'm focusing on new hydration, especially in the morning. First thing in the morning, I'm getting warm water into my body. I'm trying to flush out all the food that I had the day before. Realistically, you should not be putting new food into your body until you've flushed out the old food. This is a principle of longevity. And again, different from sports performance, different than just trying to pack on as much muscle. These are totally different um, styles of eating. But I'm drinking warm water. Warm water because it flushes and it, it allows the body to start um, pushing out everything that's inside of you. If I drink cold water, it's kind of tightening up my organs. So in the morning, warm water, uh, decaffeinated coffee, because I don't want to put caffeine into my system, high amounts of caffeine in my system on a daily basis, because I believe that you become dependent on it. And then you can't create your own energy. Green and oolong tea, uh, ginseng tea, for some reason, I cannot find ginseng tea in Calgary anymore. They don't want to sell it, or it's in the Korean shop, but it's like super expensive. But green tea, oolong tea, and I'm trying to find a cheap source of ginseng tea. So again, I'm about to train. Let's say I'm gonna to go to the gym. I still haven't consumed food. Now here, this is actually, this could be a bit of um, calories in here, but still very low and also liquid calories. So it's absorbing very easily. It's not hard on my digestive system. It's not spiking my insulin. Every time you eat food, your insulin spikes, which means your ability to burn fat is not as strong. When I am not eating, my insulin becomes lower. So when I'm fasting, my insulin becomes lower. That means that I am in a very um, high fat burning state. So the longer I go without food, the more fat my body is burning naturally. But before training, I will have, um, I'll have a big thing of water like this and I will put supplements in it. So I've been plant-based. I don't even like the term vegan because I think there's more ethical and moral um, connotations around the word vegan, but I'm plant-based I haven't eaten flesh in over six years. I haven't eaten meat in over six years, but I call myself a bit of a hybrid vegan because I'm still taking uh, collagen supplements. So collagen is from the bones of animals. It helps with the elasticity of your muscles, of your skin, of your hair, of your nails, 
And throughout my research, I've decided it's important and I'm still gonna take it even though I don't consume meat. So before my training, I'm taking collagen, creatine, um, arginine, a bit of baking soda to increase uh, nitric oxide. Don't take too much or else you will have to go to the bathroom a lot. Essential amino acids, glutamine, I'm taking that before and after. I'll do a video on supplementation in the future if you guys want, just comment below. But I'm getting supplements into my body before I'm training. This would be like going to the gym or maybe I'm training on my own uh, soccer. Before and after, again, more hydration in the body. So before I'm gonna eat my meal, so let's say I went the whole day and after training, I'm not even eating right away. I'm letting my body burn even more fat. Now, if, I, if my goal is to build as much muscle as possible, I would consume calories before training and consume calories after. But my goal is to be extremely lean, to be healthy, to have high energy, to live for a very long time. Um, and also, based on uh, game day, my eating would change as well. But just normal day, I'm trying to fast and uh, just go without food for long periods of time. Pre-meal. So before I eat, um, drinking an apple cider vinegar, lemon, and lime. And this is basically preparing my digestive system to break down food. I'm drinking a little concoction of turmeric, garlic, and ginger, and onion, which I blend it up and I drink with like a vegetable broth. And I'm just taking a few shots of that. These are more for like health to boost my immunity. I call this like an immunity elixir. Chlorophyll, um, what is chlorophyll? Chlorophyll, I believe it's like the green in plants. So if something has green in it, it has chlorophyll. I don't know the exact science, but it's healthy for you. And it's kind of like a detox. It's like a green liquid. You just take a shot of it, chlorophyll. So before I'm eating, I just want to get those little things into my system to boost immunity, to help, to prepare for digestion of food. Now I'm actually eating. So this is all the calories I would consume. So think about all the calories you consume in a day. I'm basically consuming all of those calories, if not more, within a four hour window. The first thing I would do is have a smoothie, which I call a super smoothie. And I'm writing this on the board, not for you guys. I write this on the board to have it in my house to make sure that I actually do all these things. Now, do I do this every single day? Absolutely not. It's extremely difficult to be this disciplined, especially if you don't have time. Your schedule isn't the exact same all the time. You're low on time. So I'm not worried if I'm not hitting this perfectly, but this is my goal. These are the things that I do want to eat. So a smoothie with berries, chlorella, spirulina, which are uh, seaweed powders, ashwagandha, maca, moringa, turmeric, cinnamon, ginger, which are herbs that I believe um, are good for general health, but testosterone, uh, muscle building function, a whole bunch of different things. And these things just keep coming up in my research, so I make a note of, hey, I wanna include that in my diet. How can I include it in my diet in the healthiest way possible? I'll then have a fruit bowl, so I'll just like chop up apples and bananas, and I'm really focused. This time I'm really focused on omega threes because most uh, people would say vegans are deficient in omega threes, but you can get tons of omega threes from plant foods, especially seaweeds, chlorella, spirulina, but flaxseed, chia seed, hemp hearts, um, and I sometimes I'll make a chia pudding. I can do a video on that in the future. Walnuts are great sources of omega three, so my omega threes are hit. I don't have to take a fish supplement oil. I can get it all from plant based is what I've discovered. Walnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts. I'm not doing those all at the same time. It's super expensive to buy nuts like that. But this fruit bowl, again, source of carbohydrates, I'm really focused on omega-3s there. After this, I would take a break, a little bit of break, let my body digest a bit, might go for a walk, walk dogs, uh, do a bit of work. Then I'll come back and I'll consume more soup. So here I'm having like a seaweed soup. Miso, which is a soybean paste, um, turn it into a soup and this one I really want to do a seaweed and kelp Sorry, I should have said with the um, fruits and the smoothie after that I'm taking a list of vitamins now. I'll do a video on vitamins. I don't expect you to take a whole bunch of vitamins um, because Don't even worry about vitamins if you are not giving yourself proper food and nutrition Soup Seaweed kelp for iodine um, lots of benefits of seaweed. Natto, which is a fermented soybean, and it's basically the only uh, vegan source of vitamin K2, apparently. That's why I wanted to incorporate that. Then I'll have a massive salad, a big bowl of salad with lettuce, carrot, onion, garlic, pickle, beets, hemp, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. 
take a little break. Main would be I focus on some form of cruciferous vegetable, so like a kale, a collard green, a, a leafy green, Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, cauliflower, something like that. With sweet potato, lentils, I'm trying to get a source of lentils every day, sauerkraut, fermented foods, olives, a healthy source of fats. I should put avocado in this salad or avocado in here as well. Then my dessert would just be like a piece of dark chocolate, some nuts and dried fruit, goji berries, mulberries. Before and after, I'm also um, chewing on fennel seeds to help with the digestion process. Let's just talk about the vitamins quickly. Uh, B complex, these are the ones I've identified. You can take like hundreds of vitamins, but I'm really trying to narrow it down. I used to take even more than this, now I'm taking less and I probably don't even take all these all the time. But B complex, vitamin D, massive, uh, biotin for hair and nail growth, kelp to iodine for your thyroid function to help with your testosterone, CoQ10, magnesium, glucosamine for muscle recovery, uh, zinc, massive, and these other ones not so important for you guys, ginseng for energy levels, training. So after this, I would finish my food. Then I would let myself hopefully digest before, let's say I had a game or a training at night. Then I would consume those same uh, supplements before I played. Now after, let's say this was from, what did I say? From four to 8 p.m. I consumed my food, then I had a game at night, or say, let's say, if I had a game at eight, maybe I would go like two to six or like two to five p.m. Or here I wrote 12 to four p.m. if I had like a 6 p.m. kickoff, 7 p.m. kickoff. Give yourself time to digest after eating. So then I would drink this water and after my game, again, if my, my focus was on getting as lean as possible, living as long as possible, recovering as quickly as possible, I would just consume this water after and then I wouldn't eat any food. And I would just go to sleep and I would wake up in the morning and I would repeat this process and I would do this again. I would train again in the morning, but still without eating, even eating food. So people would say, oh, that's so bad for you. To be honest, if you're focused on, let's say you were playing a tournament, you had a game at night and you had a game early in the morning, yes, you should consume food to replenish your energy. But if your goal is recovery, releasing as much inflammation from the body as possible, then not eating is actually the best thing for you, in my opinion and in my experience. I know these ideas are totally controversial and they're totally different than anything you've been told in the past. You should eat every two to three hours. You need uh, high, high amounts of protein. I probably have the most muscle on my body or like in very good condition right now and I'm consuming the least amount of protein possible. So again, I'm always learning. I've lived life consuming 200 grams. Now probably I consume like 80 grams and I don't even count calories. I'm focused more on micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, rather than macronutrients, the proteins, carbs, fats. Obviously you do need sources of those, but I don't think you need to obsess over it as much as people make you think. Bedtime, I'd have a sleepy time, tea, something like that. A few more things here. So I'm really just, if you can see, I'm eating all real food. Nothing comes in a box. Nothing's heated up in a microwave. It doesn't come from a can. These are all from nature and it's natural source. Um, no fake food, so it doesn't come from cans. Really try to avoid the fake sugars. Like even if you look on a box of cereal or a Gatorade, so much sugar, 35 grams of sugar in a thing of Gatorade. This is not good for you. This converts directly into fat, especially if you're not burning it up right away. And even if you are an athlete and you are burning it up right away, I would re really recommend that you drink water, drink something natural. You don't, yes, you can get away with it if you're an athlete, but why would you put yourself in a worse situation? Just do something a lot healthier. Drink water is always the best drink of choice. Um, and then I'm trying to, if possible, I'm trying to stop eating before 8 p.m. When you consume food at nighttime because you're not burning that energy even by just walking around or doing some housework or whatever it is, you're just sitting there, you're not burning energy. It's more um, beneficial or healthier to consume your calories earlier in the day. So I'm trying to end before 8 p.m. It's kind of a rule of thumb. Even if I didn't consume all the calories I wanted to, if it was 8 p.m., I would just stop and I would let my body rest. I'd be on a little lower calories that day, just burn some more fat, nothing wrong with that. If I ever feel like my energy isn't high enough, then I'll focus on maybe, okay, I need to consume a few more calories this day. Or if my energy expenditure was higher, let's say I had multiple training sessions or really high intensity training sessions, really high intensity weightlifting, strength training, then I would focus, okay, my body probably needs uh, more calories. But this is about being aware 
of your body. So I know that's a whole lot of information. This video is way too long as it is, but if you sat through this and you watched all this and you got something valuable, try to take a few ideas and actually implement it into your style of eating.